Pablo Escobar. The name alone evokes a sense of fear and dread, as he remains one of the most notorious figures in the history of Colombia as well as in the world. His insatiable hunger for power and unbridled ambition led to the creation of an empire that was drenched in blood, with countless victims falling prey to his wrath. The mere mention of his name was enough to evoke the specter of death, lurking ominously at every turn for those who dared to speak it aloud. Many faced the infamous Lata Oplomo ultimatum, either accept his bribe of silver or face the deadly consequences of lead. His drug empire claimed the lives of an estimated 4,000 victims, leaving behind a trail of devastation and tragedy. In this exploration, we will delve into the lives of some of his most prominent victims, whose stories serve as a chilling reminder of the horrors inflicted by this notorious drug lord. Luis Carlos Galán Luis Carlos Galán was a brave and uncompromising Colombian politician who stood up to the drug cartels that were wreaking havoc on his beloved country. He was a man of integrity who refused to be bought or intimidated by the powerful criminal organizations that controlled much of Colombia's political and economic landscape in the 1980s. Galan was not afraid to speak out against the drug lords and their criminal activities, calling for the extradition of drug traffickers to the United States and the dismantling of the cartels that were tearing his country apart. His message resonated with the Colombian people, who were tired of living in fear and wanted to see their government take action against the drug trade. However, Galan's unwavering commitment to the fight against the drug cartels ultimately led to his untimely death at the hands of one of the most notorious drug lords, Pablo Escobar. In August 1989, while campaigning for the presidency in the town of Soacha, Galan was brutally assassinated by gunmen hired by Escobar and his Medellin drug cartel. Galan's assassination marked a turning point in Colombia's fight against the drug cartels. It galvanized the public and forced the government to take action against the criminal organizations that had held the country hostage for so long. Rodrigo Lara Bonilla Rodrigo Lara Bonilla was a Colombian politician who served as Minister of Justice and Public Instruction from 1983 to 1984. He was known for his strong stance against the drug cartels that were operating in Colombia at the time particularly the notorious Medellin cartel led by Pablo Escobar. In 1983, Rodrigo Lara Bonilla was appointed Minister of Justice and Public Instruction by Colombian President Belisario Betancourt. Lara quickly made a name for himself by cracking down on the drug cartels, particularly the Medellin cartel. He ordered the extradition of several high-ranking drug lords to the United States, including Carlos Leder one of Escobar's closest associates. Lara's actions infuriated Escobar, who saw the Minister of Justice as a threat to his criminal empire. Sadly, Lara's courageous efforts to take down the king of cocaine cost him his life, and he was assassinated in 1984 on the orders of Pablo Escobar himself. Lara was driving to work when a group of gunmen on motorcycles pulled up alongside his car and opened fire. Lara was hit several times and died at the scene. The assassination of Rodrigo Lara Bonilla sent shockwaves through Colombia and the world. It was clear that the drug cartels had become so powerful that they could kill a government minister with impunity. Guillermo Cano Isaza Guillermo Cano Isaza was a prominent journalist and editor of the Colombian newspaper El Espectador. He was known for his outspoken criticism of the drug cartels that were operating in Colombia at the time, particularly the notorious Medellin cartel led by Pablo Escobar. He had previously received death threats from drug lords, but he continued to publish articles exposing their criminal activities. On December 17, 1986, Cano was driving to work when his car was intercepted by two gunmen on a motorcycle. The gunman opened fire on Kano's car, hitting him several times. Kano was rushed to the hospital, but died shortly after from his injuries. 
It was later revealed that Pablo Escobar was behind the assassination of Guillermo Cano Isaza. Escobar had a personal grudge against Cano, who had written an editorial calling for his extradition to the United States. The assassination of Guillermo Cano Isaza was a major blow to press freedom in Colombia. Diana Turbe Diana Turbe was a talented and respected journalist who worked for the Colombian news magazine Cromos. She was known for her investigative reporting on drug trafficking and organized crime in Colombia, and her work had earned her a reputation as a fearless and determined journalist. In August 1990, Turbe was kidnapped by members of the Medellin cartel, who were led by Pablo Escobar. The cartel was in the midst of a violent campaign to pressure the Colombian government to halt its extradition of drug traffickers to the United States, and Turbe was one of several hostages taken in the hopes of forcing a negotiation. For several months, Turbe and the other hostages were kept in captivity, held in squalid conditions, and subjected to psychological torture. Tragically, Turbe's hope was short-lived. On January 25, 1991, the Colombian police attempted to rescue the hostages from the cartel's hideout. In the ensuing chaos, Turbe was killed, along with several other hostages and cartel members. Carlos Mauro Hoyos Hoyos was a fearless prosecutor who had made a name for himself by aggressively pursuing drug traffickers and organized crime in Colombia. He was a man of integrity and courage who refused to back down in the face of Escobar's threats and intimidation. Hoyos' dedication to justice made him a thorn in Escobar's side, and the drug lord saw him as a major obstacle to his operations. In November 1988, Escobar's henchmen kidnapped Hoyos in broad daylight taking him from his car in the middle of a busy street. For months, Ayos was held captive in a remote location, subjected to brutal torture and confinement. Despite the physical and emotional trauma he endured, Ayos remained resolute in his commitment to bringing Escobar and his cronies to justice. In January 1989, the Colombian government launched a daring rescue operation to free Ayos from his captors, but Escobar and his men were prepared. They engaged the police in a fierce gun battle, and in the chaos, Hoyos was killed. The death of Carlos Moro Hoyos was a devastating blow to the Colombian legal community and a stark reminder of the lengths to which Escobar was willing to go to protect his criminal empire. Monsignor Jesus Emilio Jaramillo Monsalve Pablo Escobar was a man who showed no mercy even for those who dedicated their lives to serving God. Monsignor Jesus Emilio Jaramillo Monsalve was a highly respected Catholic bishop known for his work with the poor and marginalized in Colombia. But he was also a fierce critic of the violence that plagued his community, and he did not hesitate to blame Pablo Escobar and his cartel for the bloodshed. Jaramillo Monsalve was a man of deep faith and unwavering conviction who refused to be intimidated by Escobar's threats and intimidation. His dedication to justice and his tireless work to bring peace to his community made him a target of the Medellin cartel, who saw him as a major obstacle to their operations. In October 1989, Escobar's henchmen carried out a brazen and brutal assassination of Jaramillo Monsalve while he was attending a funeral in the city of Cali. The assassination of Jaramillo Monsalve was a devastating blow to the Colombian Catholic Church and a stark reminder of the lengths to which Pablo Escobar and his cartel were willing to go to protect their criminal empire. It was a clear message to anyone who dared to speak out against them that they would stop at nothing to maintain their power and control. Andres Escobar Andres Escobar was a talented soccer player who had a bright future ahead of him. He played for Colombia's national team and was considered one of the best defenders in the world. In 1994, he played in the FIFA World Cup, where he helped Colombia win a game against Greece. However, in the next game against the United States, he scored an own goal, which led to Colombia's elimination from the tournament. At that time, Pablo had already been dead for a year and a softer side had been revealed. He was a passionate soccer fan and had a deep love for the sport. He even invested heavily in the sport, sponsoring local teams and building stadiums. 
So, when Colombia played in the 1994 FIFA World Cup, it was a moment of great pride for the country and for the Medellin cartel. But that pride quickly turned to anger and disappointment when Colombia lost to the United States, thanks in part to the own goal scored by Andres Escobar. For the Medellin cartel, which had taken over from Pablo after his death, this was an unacceptable insult. They saw it as a direct affront to their former leader, who was a fervent supporter of the sport. On July 2, 1994, just days after the World Cup loss, Andres Escobar was gunned down in the parking lot of a nightclub in Medellin. While it is unclear whether the order came directly from the cartel or was simply a result of the culture of violence that Pablo had created, the message was clear. No one was safe from the wrath of the cartel. Pablo Escobar's legacy of violence and corruption extends far beyond the high-profile victims we know by name. For every famous figure who died by his hand, there were thousands who also stood up to his tyranny, who refused to be cowed and paid the ultimate price for their bravery. Their names may not be known to us, but their courage and sacrifice should never be forgotten.